welcome students today we are going to learn about ocular drug delivery system in this part in this fourth part we are going to learn about what are the novel formulations prepared to overcome the barriers okay so in part what we have learned about general anatomy of the eye in part 2 we have learned about what are the different barriers and in part 3 we have seen what are the alternative routes that can be used for ocular drug delivery system to overcome the barriers and now in part 4 we will see what are the different formulations prepared uh, through using which we can avoid the uh, barriers or we can overcome the barriers for ocular drug penetration okay so the novel formulations uh, they are of different types and that the first one is the particulate formulation now what is a particulate formu formulation it consists of microscopic uh, particles uh, in that uh, formulation hence it is called as particulate formulations okay so because of this microscopic particles the drug release is controlled as well as it uh, you can observe enhanced drug permeation so these particulate formulations they help to overcome the barriers which act along the passage of the drug through the ocular uh, tissue so because of the size the size is into nanometers or micrometers of the particulate system okay so because of this very small size and because these formulations they have targetability these formulations they are used for systemic targeting okay and because of this these formulations have an added advantage that uh, uh, they reduce the side effects so the first formulation it consists of microspheres now microspheres means what these are the spherical particles which have size in micrometer range okay so these are 1 to 100 micrometer in size and are formulated using biodegradable and biocompatible polymers okay now uh, the drug is either encapsulated or it is mixed with the uh, polymer now this polymer being biodegradable it it it, it is not toxic to the body and the uh, metabolites of that polymer they are easily removed from the body and biocompatible means it in no uh, in no way it has a tendency to react or to stick to the um body parts like cells okay uh, or the blood vessels <clears throat> so for this uh, biocompatible and biodegradable polymers are used now what is the role of this polymer it sustains the release okay it releases the drug in a controlled manner for a prolonged period of time okay so it gives controlled and sustained drug release and being subcellular in size and biocompatible it has further advantages these are mostly used for administration of intravitreal injections the sustained release which is obtained because of this microspheres it lasts for weeks to months now because of this prolonged drug release the frequency of drug administration is also lowered the frequency is lowered and also because of the sustained release the um, bio compact uh, sorry bio availability of the drug is also increased okay so these are very helpful to increase the bio availability of the drug into the ocular system the next is nanoparticles now the name itself tells us that these are the particles whose size it ranges into nanometers okay nanoparticles these also have a tendency to provide sustained release for a prolonged period of time and uh, for how long the drug is released you get the therapeutic activity okay so these nanoparticles when they are retained in the cul de sac after topical administration the entrapped drug is released from the particles at an appropriate rate hmm? means the drug release is sustained uh, these are synthesized using biodegradable polymers as i told you the diameter is less than 1 micrometer or the particle size is in the range of nanometers nanoparticles administered by intravitreal injections shows sustained release for up to 
four months now the drug release is sustained so the bioavailability of the drug is also increased and side effects are reduced and frequency of administration is also reduced next is liposomes liposomes they um, how liposomes are uh, prepared the drug is incorporated into a phospholipid bilayer okay so as our cells they also have phospholipid bilayer these liposomes they have uh, they are very much biocompatible okay and mostly these liposomes they are used for targeting of hydrophilic drugs so liposomes they have a tendency to bind to ocular surfaces and release the contents at an optimal rate okay in a sustained manner so positively charged liposomes they have great affinity to increase both the precorneal drug retention and drug bioavailability these are also biodegradable and amphiphilic drug delivery system formulated using phospholipids so we can also incorporate a lipophilic drug okay uh, into the phospholipids next is neosomes these are bilayered structures and they can entrap both hydrophilic and lipophilic drugs low toxicity they show low toxicity and they are chemically very stable these are used in their modified form um example is discosomes it ranges its size ranges in 12 to 16 micrometers for ophthalmology uh, ophthalmological formulations they fit very good into cul-de-sac and they do not get drain into the systemic pool due to large size okay so they uh, remain into cul-de-sac and they release the drug very uh, slowly in a sustained manner okay next is iontophoresis now iontophoresis is a technique it is not a type of formulation but it is a type of technique in which the drug is made to penetrate into the ocular tissue under the influence of an electrical current okay so because of this electrical electrical current which is produced uh the drug it gets penetrated into into the tissue okay so there is enhanced drug bioavailability okay so for this for generation of the electrical current a power source is required so this iontophoretic device okay it consists of electrode and an uh, and a power generator so it is a technique that enhances drug delivery across biological membrane by application of low intensity electrical current it is non invasive method and it gives you increased drug penetration the basic design of ocular iontophoretic device consist of a power source and two electrodes the donor electrode it is used for application of the formulation hence it is called as ocular applicator and the return electrode the drug is filled into the applicator and the return electrode is placed at a distal site on the body generally on the forehead to form an electrical current okay now what happens your applicator uh, ocular applicator it contains your drug formulation right so that uh, so when you put this in uh, upon your eye then and the return electrode is to be placed somewhere near okay mostly it is placed on the forehead okay to complete the circuit now what happens one electrode is placed near, into your eye and the second electrode is placed Uh, onto your forehead so it it forms a it completes the electrical circuit okay so when you switch on the power source the electrode the uh, ocular applicator it will help for the um, drug to move into your ocular system because the electrical circuit is complete so drug movement it occurs under the influence of the electrical current so the drug moves due to migration and electrosmosis mostly this system is used for administration of antibiotics antivirals antifungals steroids antimetabolites and genes so this is ocufor okay this this particular device is called as an ocufor it consists of this power source this is the ocular applicator this applicator is dipped into the formulation it is and it is placed over the uh, lens okay now because of the current generated this is the return electrode now because of the current uh, generated uh, in between these two electrodes the drug is moved 
or it is made to penetrate into the ocular tissue okay now what is the disadvantage of the system the drug or the formulation it covers the whole of the lens and hence the vision of the uh, patient is blocked the second one is eye gate eye gate is available into market now if you can see this it is a modified uh, ocular applicate uh, applicated okay now you can see through this electrode okay uh, the circular electrode the drug is moving hmm? and with the help of this wire the electric current is made it is connected to the power source now this this whole uh, uh, the shape of the applicator is such that it will it will only uh, come in contact with the periphery of the lens and it is not going to hamper the vision of the patient okay so it is uh, helpful and this is the next type of applicator directly the uh, electrode is placed into the cul-de-sac along with the formulation next is implants implants control the release kinetics of the drug from polymeric systems by using various polymers and polymeric membranes again here through the implants the drug release is sustained and who is responsible for controlling the release the polymeric system again here <coughs> different types of polymers are used depending on what type of implant we are using okay so it is an invasive technique where implants are placed at the pars plana of the eye the pars plana is the part of the uva one of the three layers that comprise the eye they provide a platform for a sustained release of molecules from either biodegradable or, or non biodegradable polymeric matrices for several months to years okay now if you are using a biodegradable material then there is no need to take uh, take out the remaining of the um, of the implant after complete drug release has been obtained but if non biodegradable polymer is used then after the drug release is complete you have to take out that system out of your body of your eye so these implants are either injected into the vitreous or they are sutured onto the sclera for intravitreal or transscleral drug delivery the biodegradable implants they do not require post treatment removal but can cause more erratic drug release profiles polymers which are used <coughs> uh, sorry to prepare biodegradable implants includes polylactic coglycolic acid polycaprolactone polyanhydride and polyortho ester uh conversely non biodegradable implants they are they require an inv invasive surgical removal means you have to implant it by um making a cut okay then you have to put it and then after the drug release is complete you have to remove it again by invasive surgical method okay but this type of implants they provide more accurate controlled drug release for a prolonged period the polymers used for preparing non biodegradable implants include silic silicon polyvinyl alcohol and ethyl ethylene vinyl acetate currently two surgically implanted non biodegradable intravitreal implants are available in the market it is one is called as vita cert and the second one is the reti cert vita cert contains gencyclovir for the treatment of cmv retinitis for up to 8 months and it is mainstay therapy for patients with cmv retinitis whereas retisert it contains flucinolone acetonide it is used for the treatment of chronic non infectious posterior oocytes this reservoir system releases the drug for up to 2.5 years the next type of system is hydrogels okay now hydrogels means what these are the polymers which have a tendency to absorb large amount of water they can absorb from 20 to 80% of water either water or body fluids okay so they form a 
so these are the gels which have a high tendency to absorb water and body fluids okay hence they are called as hydrogels okay so these systems they include various phase changing polymers to achieve sustained drug release after administration these polymers they changes to a semi solid or solid matrix and because of that uh, uh, 3d gel which is formed the drug is released very slowly so this change in, uh, into the uh, uh, state from solution to gel it is achieved by uh, changes in temperature ion concentration or ph so these three factors hmm, the physiological factors they act as the stimuli for conversion of the phase from salt to gel so polymers used are hyaluronic acid polyacrylic acid and chitosan these are polymeric network that are hydrophilic in nature and can imbibe large quantities of water and biological fluids in swollen cross linked gel system for drug delivery so they retain both type of drugs hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic small molecules and macromolecules and they prolong the drug release okay so the drug release which we get from hydrogels is a sustained drug release okay so they can be biodegradable or non biodegradable and they are also biocompatible so poly polysaccharides like cellulose xanthan carrageenan hyaluronic acid alginate dextrin etc are used these are also called as stimuli response responsive systems so this was all about the novel formulations that are used to overcome the barriers of ocular uh, drug penetration thank you